Hi and welcome to Rush Sports' pre-draft analysis for you guys, the fans, where I can guide you to make the right picks on the app while watching the 2020 NBA Draft. I'm Mikey Domagala, owner of NBA Buzz with 3 million combined followers on social media. I host my own show Inside Buzz and host ESPN's The Truth Podcast. Here are my predictions for the top 10 picks in the 2020 NBA Draft, assuming no trades are involved. To start it off, the 10th pick by the Phoenix Suns. The number 10 pick from Phoenix, you know, it just got a lot more interesting. They just traded for Chris Paul, eliminating their need for a point guard next season, but just because they don't need a point guard doesn't mean they shouldn't get one. Chris Paul is still an elite point guard, but guys, he's 35 years old. He'll help the development of Booker and Ayton, but won't be around forever. Phoenix drafting German point guard Killian Hayes with the 10th pick may be the right move. He could spend the first seasons learning from Chris Paul, who will be a mentor and shape him into the team's cornerstone floor general. At 6'5", Hayes is an auto mismatch and has stop and go speed, a sweet jumper, awesome court vision, and the 19 year old averaged 13 points per game, 6 assists per game amongst grown men in Germany last season. Next up, the Washington Wizards with the 9th pick. Washington gets a healthy John Wall and Bradley Beal back on the floor in 2021. They don't necessarily need a guard right now. Although he's slated right outside of the top 10, I see Washington reaching back a little bit and grabbing Vanderbilt forward Aaron Nesmith. He averaged 23 points per game on 51% field goals, 52% from three, a ridiculous mark. And Beal was all alone last year. He almost led Washington to the playoffs without Wall or anybody else around him. Ed Wall and Nesmith, a player who could shoot efficient from range, and they'll be a playoff team before we know it. And next up, of course, the New York Knicks with the 8th pick. I'm a New Yorker. The Knicks are my favorite team. They need just about everything. The Knicks should make an easy pick if this guy drops to them, though, at number 8. Six foot nine, 220 pound, powerful, strong forward, Obi Topin. Assuming New York gets a point guard in free agency, what they need after that is a dynamic wing. That's where Topin comes in. He could run the floor, finish at the rim, run the pick and roll, and even shoot for mid-range. Topin averaged 20 points per game, 8 rebounds, and 1 block at Dayton. I see Amari Stoudemire written all over this kid. Next up, the Detroit Pistons with the 7th pick. The Pistons no longer have Andre Drummond at the 5 and are on the verge of losing big man Christian Woods to free agency. They need a dynamic big like Onyeka Okongwu out of USC with their 7th pick. Okongwu is getting comparisons from Bam Adebayo and if he lives up to that hype, it will be easy to build around him. He averaged 16 points per game, 9 rebounds per game, and 3 blocks last season. He'll be a great addition for them. Moving on to the Atlanta Hawks at 6. You know, the Hawks, like the Bulls, have young guys with potential who could score the ball, but that doesn't mean they could play defense. Trey is a beast at the forefront of the team. John Collins become an all-star type player. What they need, they need stoppers on the defensive end and at the wings. Adding Clint Capella was nice, but drafting Auburn forward Isaac Okoro who can guard the 1, 2, and 3 should be the move. Okaro averaged 13 points per game, 5 rebounds, 1 block, and 1 steal a game last season at Auburn. At 5, the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs are in desperate need of a franchise player to build around. Colin Sexton and Darius Garland are still young guard pieces with talent, but they need a scoring forward. That guy is Denny Avdia from Maccabi Tel Aviv. This kid can shoot and has great basketball IQ. And in recent years around the NBA, these international kids have been stars. Just look at Luka Doncic. I think Cleveland should take the gamble. Next up at four, the Chicago Bulls. You know, we're getting really close to number one here. The Bulls at number four. Now, the Bulls team isn't that bad. They barely won any games over the past two years, but the potential of Zach Levine, Wendell Carter, and Laurie Markkinen is there. They desperately need a point guard though, and that's why I see them taking Tyrese Halliburton of Iowa State at number four. He's an athletic slasher with great court vision, and he'll help the Bulls and really help develop Zach Levine at the two guard. And third, the Michael Jordan-led Charlotte Hornets. You know, the Hornets at number three. Where are they going to go? It depends what falls to them. But based off my list, and with this guy possibly dropping to them, there's no doubt in my mind that the Hornets will take Anthony Edwards out of Georgia. Edwards is a predicted number one pick to some, and he has the talent and the body of a superstar. 6'5", 225-pound guard. Now, Charlotte has Rozier and Graham, but Michael Jordan should not miss out on Edwards. All right, folks, we're getting down to the last two. Of course, the powerhouse, the Golden State Warriors, they were without their top dogs last season, you know, allowing them to get the number two pick. That's how bad they did, surprisingly. 
the Warriors at number two. All right, you know, assuming they don't trade this pick for value, I see the Warriors taking Memphis center, James Wiseman, to be their center of the future. Golden State is stacked, like I said, with Curry, Clay, Draymond, Andrew Wiggins. But outside of that, they need a big man and some bench support. If they keep the pick, they're going to go with Wiseman, in my opinion. Seven foot one, extremely athletic, 20 points per game, 11 rebounds per game, and three blocks. Get this, in just three games at Memphis before getting suspended by the NCAA, he took some money from NBA legend Penny Hardaway, which made that suspension happen. But we'll see if Golden State wants to take him still. And last but not least, the Minnesota Timberwolves with the number one overall pick. Who else will it be? I see the Timberwolves going with LaMelo Ball. How can they not? Six foot eight, he could pass, facilitate, He's improved as a shooter and was a pro already for years overseas. Ball can simply get a bucket, and pairing him with D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns can only help him grow. He's got the ball name with him too, so this will also help Minnesota get a lot more jersey sales, ratings, and overall buzz from the NBA world. Everyone wants to see what LaMelo will do, and after averaging 17 points per game, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists in Australia amongst grown men, the hype is real. So what will LaMelo be? That's my top 10. Again, I'm Mikey Domagala. I'm here with Rush Sports on the app. Check them out, everybody listening. And guys, good luck on the draft with making your picks.